I'm sorry. Aaron's with Kellogg's, I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's not enough to say they're just, you know, large Midwestern. Cheerios is a great brand, but. Yeah, sorry about that. We, I, I love General Mills, so I'm good with that. Yeah, no, sorry about that. That's, wow, you, that's, you were gonna make this a. <laughs> so, um, React. 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 Julian, React. What do you think about those, those, those couple slides I showed? Um, I, I think there's absolutely some validity to it. Uh, I think that there's uh, some challenges that, that are real in the TV model that, that make that a lot harder to achieve. Uh, you know, the reality is, is most, most cable and TV guys make their money on affiliate, not on ad sales. So I don't know if ad sales are going to be the driver to really change everything uh, in the TV model, if you will. Uh, having said that, um, there's a tidal wave, and that tidal wave is data, that tidal wave is analytics, that tidal wave is, is accountability, uh, and I don't think that can be stopped. And we're in a place today where we're really moving uh, closer to that. I think the technology is there, has been there. Uh, I just think that there has to be something, um, a tipping point to really kind of push it into a, a more actionable environment. So what kind of tipping point? I mean, can you like... I mean, just make, you know, imagine one, make one up. What are the kinds of things that could happen that could tip it? So I think for me, uh, TV is very driven a lot by live sports. And for me, the tipping point is really 2020, not 2018. 2020 is when the NFL uh, is going to potentially renew their TV deal. Um, I think if the NFL decides to go in a direction that is opposite of just signing up with the large broadcasters and maybe do a deal with a Google or whomever it might be, um, I think that's the tipping point to move TV into a completely different arena. Aaron. Yeah, I mean, I think I agree with a lot, a lot of what you're saying. Uh, I think the, your point on data is right on. I think that data is going to really push things in this direction. I mean, I... I would be bullish on your slides in terms of the growth of um, both audience-based television buying and even programmatic-based uh, television buying. Uh, I think there's just tremendous potential there. Um, you know, your point on, on sports and television, I think, is, is valid in so much as, uh, you know, sports are a driver of engagement with, with television for, for viewers, right, for consumers. And uh, I think that that's what marketers are going to look for as we go forward in terms of a tipping point is where do they continue to see engagement with the content, engagement um, from a consumer point of view so that the message that we put in front of consumers has more, more resonance, more, more impact with consumers. And if it's sports that drives that on television, that's one thing. But what we've seen from consumers is you know, we're willing to exchange value, right? So when I say that, what I mean is, I'm willing to watch an ad if, uh, you know, if I get a value exchange for it. So I'm willing to watch ads. We actually see in the analysis we do for our advertising, online video is extremely impactful. It's extremely, uh, what we would call effective uh, in terms of the volume I can drive per impression that I put into the marketplace. Online video is some of the some of the most successful uh, tactics we have. Be, um, you know, so consumers are very engaged with that. It's a lean lean in, lean forward, uh, you know, kind of a space. And so, if television becomes more that way, like I, I would, even if it's time shifted, I may be willing to to watch ads if if that's required in order to have the convenience of time shifted viewing and things like that. Yeah. So, uh, I like the sort of the structural issue that you hit, Julian and Aaron. I want to. You know, suggest, you know, come back to you on a question with that, like, you know, when are the contracts up with the NFL and how things like that might change it? So um, next month, um, in places like Bentonville, Arkansas, and Minneapolis, and places where a lot of large retailers are, there's going to be a bunch of partner discussions. And the partner discussions will be about, let's say, how many boxes of Cheerios, and amount of sales, and price, and promotion and advertising support. Yeah. And in those deals, there's going to be this, those little clause that's been hanging there for you know, a good 20 years or so about the amount of gross rating points that will be committed on a weekly basis against a sex age demographic. Mm -hmm. And when is, that, when is that clause, which it handcuffs obviously a lot of the amount of money that's tied up and that ends up in TV, when's that clause gonna talk about the digital video engagement or some other metric? 
Well, I don't know about that, that clause, <laughs> but I can tell you, tell you this, that um, we're already having amazing discussions with our uh, you know, retail partners around what the innovation that we've brought to, to Kellogg in terms of marketing capabilities. So we look at things like our, um, I would say our, uh, where we've gone with programmatic as a strategic advantage that we can take to the customer table. And we can say, guys, look, we're able to help you go out and, and find, find the audience we really want to talk to within you know, five mile radius of your actual stores with a message that's co-branded between Kellogg and retailer ABC, driving people directly to your store. So not only are we kind of think about, thinking about programmatic, the use of programmatic in the upper funnel drive awareness of our products, we're using it to go what we would call from desire down into decide to say, also, by the way, if you buy two cereals, you get free milk at you know, retailer XYZ, and the nearest one to you is this address. So we've gone that far with our retailers. So we look at you know, programmatic online as a, as a strategic advantage with our customers, and I think that we're also stepping into that, that little blue dot on the television mm -hmm. side to, so that we can be the first ones there to say, hey, guys, by the way, we can do this at on television as well. You know, we can get to that audience that's most relevant to you as a retailer and help you get your message in front of them. Well, I, I've had the luxury of, of working across a lot of large brands in my career, Kellogg actually being one of them. Um, and, and, you know, what Aaron's talking about is in, incredibly innovative by a company that really understands where the consumer is really consuming the content, right? And we're looking at mobile and online video and all these things. Um, I don't know that all marketers are, are ready to move in that direction. I think everybody wants to talk to it. Um, I think they're, they're, you know, we've seen two great examples today of a Unilever and, and a Kellogg and brands that really understand um, that it takes more than just TV to, to reach a consumer. Um, we're in an environment where technology is going to drive not just programmatic, because programmatic to me is operations, right? And how do I make things easier to execute? Mm -hmm. um, but we're in, a, we're in a period of time right now where I think marketers are starting to understand that the way that to reach consumers is to engage with them, right? And to have a connection with them, whether that's through emotional, uh, whether that's through touch points using mobile, whether that's through reaching them, you know, directly uh, in the right time at the right place. Um, and TV is not a medium that speaks to that. Um, it does speak to creating a relationship. And TV really is a relationship maker. Um, you have a relationship with the content you consume, uh, and therefore, ideally, the advertising that's, that's posed during that content. I think we're going to see a lot of um, movement back towards 1950s-style brand-sponsored TVs mm -hmm. where people sponsoring it rather than the spots when we move into a much more connected environment, right? And you have uh, another company that I worked with, Sam Samsung and others, really driving that, right? Um, when you get into that environment, you, you really do start to see that um, your ability to make connections with the consumer is not necessarily about sitting in the home. Um, it's about being able to interact with them. And I think the TV, as, as, a, as a consumer electronic, is actually growing up with the space, uh, which is really going to delay some of, the, some, of the, some of the things that people want to do. People want TV to be digital today. Uh, people want the measurement there today. I, I don't know that that's necessarily viable um, in the next few years, but to your point and, and to the slide you put up, I think within the next five years, within the next seven years, as you get more tech savvy companies coming in and, and creating connected experiences with the consumer, um, you will start to see more measurement that's connected to that and you will be able to then adjust to that. So one of the things I'd, I'd like you to address, because I think it'd be really relevant to this group is, what about organizationally? Like, there's obviously some things structurally out there. It, it, one of the things that surprised me, or I've learned about television, was 25 or so, 30 years ago, when it had sort of its golden age really got going, it was a time when it really embraced research. And a lot of the people that drove it, and I was very fortunate to have breakfast this morning with Phil Garasio. How many people here know how many people really are TV people know who Phil Garasio is? Yeah, everyone has to Google him who doesn't know. I mean, really built the TV business, ad business as we know it. And he talked about it, it was all very data-driven and Procter & Gamble was driving it then. Right. How do you two, A, talk a little bit about the kind of access you have to the ultimate, you know, the CEOs of your companies or the boards or the stakeholders, mm -hmm. and how are your voices as the top sort of digital marketing data tech strategist? Um, you know, you know, 
how is that happening or how does it you know, manifest? <laughs> That's funny. This is <laughs> complete coincidence. We did not even discuss this, but uh, we actually were asked just last week to give our board, a board of directors for Kellogg, uh, an update on our digital marketing where we're at and the progress that we've made. And they were, um, they were amazed by our update. They were really, really pleased with it. Uh, they want to know. They want to understand this. You know, and, and to make it clear, you mean like you personally were? Yes, we're in, in front of the board of directors, yeah, um, giving them no an update there. with some others. With some others. It wasn't <laughs> yeah, just me, yeah. no. Um, but, uh, you know, you got to understand marketing is just one one component of everything that they have to think about, right? Um, so to know that our, the investment that we're putting into the marketplace is being stewarded, um, you know, in a, in a very successful fashion, that's what they want to understand, right? And, um, you know, what, what, they, what they're asking for, and um, very specifically, uh, was measurement. What are we, how are we ensuring that this investment that we're putting out there, you guys came to us, you know, four years ago and asked for a lot of money to go build a digital marketing organization, to bring the talent in, uh, how do we know that that's working? And part of what we talked about, and I, I really love your, your funnel slide, is uh, how measurable what we are doing is and how, why we feel so confident that that investment's paying out and it's working for us, uh, even in the face of a challenging business environment, right? So there are so many other factors beyond just our marketing effectiveness that play into the results that a, a company like Kellogg would see. And so we try to you know, bring that up and say, hey, look, we look at the effectiveness of our marketing, but we look at that in, in respect to all the other uh, pressures in the marketplace that would drive our business up or down, uh, you know, and, and in many cases, it's a great story because we have some, some businesses and brands that are, are doing fantastic and the market, the, what, the position we've taken is driving that and others, the marketing's working, but it's helping to offset some of the, the other challenges that we might see in terms of trade or distribution and other factors like that, right? So that's what they want to know. Yeah. Julian, how is this within, you know, the, you know, you know your role, visibility, access within Zenith, Zenith Optimedia, Publicis, you know? Well, I, I spent the last nine years uh, at Starcom MediaVest, and, and that gave me a really great background, right, on, on the digital side of it, and I ran technology, and I, and I made a lot of the decisions in terms of, you know, how to move in the, into the analytics space and how we measure video and all these other things. Um, as I moved into my role at Zenith, I, I now go across media, and that allows me to kind of, you know, see the variation, right? and to Aaron's point, how accountable digital is to some degree almost too accountable, mm, yeah. frankly, <laughs> um, versus what really the TV model is. But I think the reality is, is that marketers, um, there's a subset of marketers that I think want to make it more accountable, and I think there's a subset of marketers and, and maybe personnel uh, that are really happy to just keep it where it is. Uh, because they know it, they understand it, and it's easy to you know keep going in the direction that they're going, and, and learning new things is not necessarily uh, everybody's interest, right? Um, and luckily, I, I haven't been exposed to those kinds of marketers in, in, in the experience that I've had. But I do see that, you know, as we start to look at, you know, measurement and we start to look at the, the analytics points that, that really drive, you know, sales, right? Because at the end of the day, everybody's selling a product and you want to tie back to that. Um, the digital arena and the online video and so on really, you know, to your point, really gives you that entire funnel. But I think we're starting to see the, 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 the point in time where some TV is moving in that direction, that little blue dot, right, that you pointed out. Um, that's, whether that's addressable, whether that's really, you know, companies like RentTrack selling their data everywhere, right? Uh, you know, other companies that are coming in, re traditional research companies that maybe don't have uh, the name of a Nielsen or a Comscore. Um, really coming in and bringing additional data, right? Uh, we're getting access to more sales data and we could tie in things a little greater. Um, and we have social media that allows us to track earned media, right? We have, you know, uh, engagement metrics uh, that we could tie in and start using those as additional modeling points to track success. So it's not just about, you know, whether or not you hit that 25 to 49, it's whether or not you hit that 25 to 49, did they engage? Okay, and did they go out and then, you know, basically become um, advocates for your brand, right? And did they open up to other eyeballs? And we're tracking that all the way through, and we can see how all of that works with the tools that we have, and that really starts making a difference. And when you start showing that to marketers and start being able to track that accountability, I think that's where you're going to start to see the tipping point of the, the advertiser community going, I want more accountability. I want to know exactly 
where my money is going and where the return on investment is. And that's going to be the point where we're going to start to see a little bit more accountability. So um, what I'd like to, to close with here, I'd, I'd like to each to address one issue. Um, you know, it's interesting when you talk about the amount of people that are here that like, worry about or manage television is very small, but probably the number of people here who manage video is virtually everybody, and the number of people who will aspire to managing these tens of billions of dollars that will be digitally data um, TV. What's the, what's the advice you would give each of them to do um, to be able to better participate in that. And that might be a book they should read over the holidays. That might be the person they should go talk to. That might be a skill they want to get. Um, I think the biggest piece of advice that I could give is, is don't be afraid to learn. Yeah. Um, really take the time to understand all media types. It's not simply about digital, it's not simply about TV. Right? There's out of home, you know, as much as people want to talk about the demise of print, people still read magazines. Um, you know, start to learn about all of it, how it's tracked. Realize that it is going to come together. Uh, it's going to take time for it to come together, but it's going to come together. And how do you tie back all of your marketing investment? Because it's not just about media mix modeling. It's, it's about understanding ultimately where all of your dollars are going and the right marketing mix and the right type of advertising to the consumer that you're trying to reach. Um, so take the time to learn about it all. Because the smarter you get, the more uh, you're going to be able to really help the clients and the people that, that and the constituency that you uh, represent or work for or try to service. Yeah. Aaron? Yeah, I mean, so that's a great point. What we said even last week with our, our, our board is what we've done is we follow the consumer. And I would say the same thing, and, and I think it's very similar to what, what Julian's saying, is follow the consumer. Understand where the consumer is at, what the consumer, how the consumer is engaging with media. What we know is today's consumers consuming more media across more devices than ever before. So media consumption in general is up in a, 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 a massive amount, and it's happening across all these devices. But you have to understand how how each device works, how to, from a consumer's engagement standpoint, and what they're able to um, take away from the exposures that they're open to in those devices. And it's very challenging, I think, but we've got to break beyond our silos. And I think even sitting here, we're all still, to your point, you ask how many people are, are working in TV, and it's a very, very few hands come up um, because we still think very siloed about, well, you know, I'm planning digital media. Maybe I'm planning digital online video, but I'm not planning television. Well, we've got to do our best, I think. You know, that would be my advice. Do your best to, to try to think beyond that silo and think, of, think about the consumer and how do I plan for the consumer? Uh, and it could be print. There could be a very significant portion Absolutely. of that investment in print. Absolutely. We've seen print continue to be extremely effective, uh, uh, as a matter of fact. You know, it may be a slightly smaller base, but it's an extremely effective medium. Um, you know, so go beyond those silos and understand how to follow the consumer and bring that to your client. If I could add just one thing. Yeah. Push for progress. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people think that we're even like in digital, like we're at the, the apex of where we are in terms of measurement and accountability. We're not, we're not even close. Uh, mobile is a medium, for example, that very much lacks in really good accountable Absolutely. metrics. Push for progress, make things happen. The more accountable we could be, the better we are. I love that. Bridging the gap, push for progress. I want to thank very much Aaron Fetters of the Kellogg Company, and sorry <laughs> about that, and Julian Zillabrand of Zenith Media Group. Thank That's you very right. much. Thank you, Dave.